The title of this message is, I am writing to you. This comes from 1 John, the second chapter, verses 7 through 14. Let's turn to that book and begin reading at verse 7. Beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now. The one who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I have written to you, children, because you know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. John the Apostle really liked to be repetitive in his writings, especially in this epistle. He wrote the words write or written eight times in these verses. God's inspired word opens lives, hearts, minds, and souls. This is the message that has lasted the ages It is a message of love, grace, and mercy for all. John speaks about the word his readers had already heard. The commandment to love others is old and it is new. It was old because it was mentioned in the Old Testament, specifically in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18. It is new because Jesus Christ interpreted love in a new way, as seen in John, chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. In the body of Christ, love is only expressed by showing respect. It is also displayed through self-sacrifice and by serving others. You can say it is selfless giving, going beyond the fellowship of believers to enemies and those who persecute the church. Love must be the unifying force and what identifies true believers in Jesus Christ. Love is the key to walk in the light of God. If we hate others, We cannot mature and grow spiritually. As we grow in God's love, we will continue to grow to love not only the brethren, but those who hate us as well. Now, if we call ourselves believers and yet yet hate others, this person still lives in the darkness. This is not to say that for any believer that if we dislike someone, we cannot be a believer. These verses are not talking about disliking or ever disagreeing with another follower of Christ. Within the body of Christ, there will always be people we do not like. We are human after all. The Greek meaning of hate that John mentions here conveys the notion of someone whose habit of hate 
was his lifestyle, the very way he lived. John focused on the hateful attitudes that cause us to ignore and despise others, to treat them as an irritant and as an enemy. If we profess or call ourselves believers, yet our words and lifestyle convey hate for others, it means we were never born again. This is what John was writing about concerning the false teachers. They claimed spiritual enlightenment. However, their lack of love for the brethren proved proved their words and actions are false. They are lies. Love is not a feeling. It is a choice. We can choose to love others and be concerned about them. And when we do, God will give us or help us to express our love. Now, there are but two families from God's point of view. Children of God and the children of Satan. John is saying that as believers we have been forgiven and have come to know God as our Heavenly Father. Because of that we are part of God's family. We are not in any case or situation to show love, affection, for, or allegiance to Satan's family and the world. Now, there are clear distinctions in the stages of spiritual growth within God's family. John mentions fathers. These are the most mature, have deep knowledge of God. This is the pinnacle of spiritual growth. This is where we know God in his fullness. On the other hand, young men are those who have not reached such maturity and growth. But they do know sound doctrine. They are against sin and error because God's word lives within them. Satan's plan and his effort are to spread lies and to deceive. These young men have overcome him. Little children are those who have only the most basic knowledge and awareness of God and need to grow. Each stage of spiritual awareness and growth builds upon the other. As little children learn about Jesus Christ, they will grow in their ability to win the battle against temptation. As young men, they will move from victory to victory as they grow in their relationship with Christ. Fathers, as they are the ones who have known Christ for years, have gained the wisdom needed to teach the young believer and start that spiritual life cycle once again. So all, all who in God's family manifest the character of Christ at different levels. Whether it is written or right, from John's point of view, it portrays John, John's concern for the brothers, for the brethren. God is telling all believers through scripture the character we need to have as believers in Christ. We cannot be a believer in Christ if we display hate for others. This is what the false teachers did in John's day. And it happens today with the false teachers and their false teachings. Also, all believers have gone through stages in their spiritual enlightenment and growth. Much like how we are born and mature in our physical bodies, we begin our spiritual journey as little children, knowing next to nothing about God and Jesus Christ. We move on to young men who have not yet matured enough to be called fathers, but know the Word of God and can resist the wiles and temptations of Satan and the world. 
And finally, fathers, these are those who have reached the zenith in spiritual awareness and enlightenment, a stage that all believers must shoot for in their spiritual walk. Now, how do you love? How do you display this love? Where are your where are you in your spiritual journey? Are you still a child? Are you a young adult? Or have you reached the mature father yet? God wants all of us to continue our growth and not be stagnant in our walk. We also need to display our love. The love that only God gives us, and that is to show love to all. He showed us that love at the cross. Father, we know your word reveals your grace and love and your mercy. It tells us your story and the story that the world needs to hear. As believers in Christ, we need to show love, be the image of love to the world. We also need to grow in our knowledge of you. As we start our being children and we mature as young adults and when we reach the level of father, we need to grow, continually grow Knowing you, knowing your word, being close to you. We know, Lord, the, the world may hinder, may want to block, may want to take you out of everything. But as your children, as your children, Lord, we want to continue that walk you have given us to continually mature and grow as your child before you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.